I have to click. All right, everybody, how's everyone doing today? You guys still doing all right? Yeah. Is that right. not an awesome presentation by Jermaine? Honestly, can we give him a round of applause? I just, I just love the enthusiasm, the energy, the knowledge. Definitely, I, I agree with what the other Jermaine said, that we're seeing an info marketing star in the making. So it's very much an honor to be here today. I wanted to give some value, not just talk about kind of what we, we have going on. Um, I'll answer all of everyone's questions. Um, when I came here, Jermaine just wanted to, me to talk a little, bit about, a little bit about what we're doing, how we're implementing the stuff from Automation Clinic and, and kind of the, the successes and maybe some of the challenges we faced. So I'm going to just jump into the presentation here. And so right now, our goal, we've got three key goals with the company. First one is to generate $6.5 million in revenue from automated online sales with a stretch goal of $10 million. Last year, the company did 2.3, and uh, we're already on pace to achieve this goal, and that's kind of what we're hoping to, to follow through with for the rest of the year. The second goal is to build a lead generation machine for our sales team. So they have their own income goal, irrespective of the, the one from our automated online sales. And then the third thing we want to do is improve our web, uh, uh, web presence, and that's kind of like the brand, the face, because often you hear people talk about direct response being ugly and that, and Jermaine's done a good job of melding the kind of brand with the, you know, making offers, really. Direct response is really just about yes, no questions. Now, before I jump into kind of what we're doing, I want to find out who else here wants to build a multi-million dollar funnel? Okay, raise your hands. Good, okay, perfect. So I'm going to walk you through the formula, and this is the exact same formula that uh, I've helped implement with the company I'm working with now and um, pre people previously, and I'll, I'll continue to do. So first of all, like Jermaine mentioned, you have to find a hot lo uh, list of hot buyers. You must always find a market first. Both Jermaine's mentioned that today. And then focus on the next part after. Okay, if, um, Gary Halbert said, if you could have one thing to be successful in business, if you had a burger stand, what would you want? It would be a starving crowd, because you could be the best chef in the world, but if you give people who have just finished eating your, your meal, right? They can't, they can't take it in. So finding buyers, as Jermaine mentioned, we're driving a ton of traffic off of Facebook. And traffic, most people think they have a traffic problem, but they don't. They have a conversion problem. Here, we've got on Facebook. It's just so stupid simple now. I just went and I looked up under behaviors. I found purchase behavior. I went under business purchases and found business marketing in the United States. It gave me a potential audience of 2.4 million people. So you find the group of people first, okay? Worry about products second. There is some math that we have to go into, and we'll get into that kind of midway end of my presentation. My goal is by the end of this presentation, hopefully, uh, I will have helped bridge some of the gaps for you. That was one of the most quintessential things that I, I'm very fortunate to have made friends with Jermaine about, because that was really, I've been doing all these courses, reading all this stuff, and there's just key pieces, and of course I'm still learning, but really, I, you know, when you start connecting the dots, that's when you'll really start to have the success. You, a lot of you can feel it. You're like, it's like the old, any, everyone, anyone here have those old school radios that with the knob you have to turn? Yeah? So it's like, you know, it's kind of fuzzy, but you can't quite get it, and, oh, you lost it, and if you know you're there, just keep, keep hammering away at your craft, okay? You'll, you'll definitely get there. So two, once you know the people you're targeting, Find or create your product to sell, right? Info marketing is great. The margins are phenomenal. It's a digital product. Once you set it, make it, you can sell it all day long. Um, you want to get out of trading dollars for hours. The third step is to create your funnel. So it's an opt-in page and a sales letter. That's as simple as it can be. Um, I mean, when I first got an information uh, into internet marketing, you know, it was described internet marketing is really simple. It's an opt-in page, it's a sales letter, and it's an autoresponder that goes on forever is how it was described to me. This is like you know early 2000s, I guess, at the time. Now it's a lot more complex, but essentially it's not that different. Ads to lead magnet, sales letter, autoresponder, right? Still the same thing. Next, you're going to run a test, 1,000 to 5,000 visitors. Next, you're going to analyze the results. Some tools you can use, Crazy Egg, any of the pay-per-click tracking pixels. You want to make sure you're always tracking directly to sales. I don't know how long I, uh, I'll be up here, but I've done some tests and there's one you can see where we have two pages, opt-in pages. One of them is clearly beating the other, not by a lot, but enough that we would shut off the old one. But then that's for opt-ins. When you look at sales, the old one, which is performing 20% worse, is actually has twice as many buyers for whatever reason. For whatever reason, same traffic, two opt-in pages, twice as many people buy that go through one page versus the other. And VWO stands for Visual Website Optimizer. So now if your results are good, 
you go get 20,000 to 100,000 more visitors. If results are still good, you start rolling out and take care of business. And that's really how simple what we've been doing is. And then the eighth step is a file that I shared, uh, which I originally got from Perry Belcher and Ryan Dice. It's in the Automation Click uh, Clinic Facebook group. It's a 25 step point checklist for optimizing your sales letter. Ultimately, like with your question, what you, you charge, you test that last. So right now, to, to prove something works versus something doesn't work, you need conversions. To have a conclusive test, you need 40 to 200 conversions on average. So if you want to get the best price in the beginning, you just have to give it away for a dollar, seven dollars, whatever. So price resistance is the bare minimum. And then you optimize everything else, starting from the top of the page down. And that checklist gives you 25 points to work your way through. And then once you fully optimize this thing, then you start testing different prices. And then when you hit a price that you find that is like leveling out, out at, try a one pay versus a two pay, one pay versus a three pay. So it's a, it's a continual process. It's like what Jermaine was saying about how the monthly mu music mentor, you know, when you have it laid out, now you can start optimizing it. You can reshoot something and mention, re reference something that's coming down the line. You can really, right, really get scientific about it and really enhance and create some amazing quality stuff. You can't do that if you're doing it live all the time. So this is the, the, the checklist, one to eight as a whole. If you want to take, miss any notes, want to follow up on them. So, and most people consider, and this is not necessarily new news for, for anyone here, but I'm going to say it anyways. Most people consider getting the sale to be the victory. A lot of people. And it's all about where do I get more customers? Where do I get more sales? So you have your inquiry that leads to the lead, sales ready lead, qualified prospect, customer. But what a lot of people forget is every sale is a golden egg and every customer is a goose who lays them. And so for us, part of how we're looking to scale out and achieve our goals this year is that we've got tiers. So this is basically an information marketing pyramid. And at the bottom, you've got your free content, your email opt-in, lead magnets, all the stuff you give away to build your audience. It's called two-step marketing in some circles. It's basically who's interested in this topic. Raise your hand, tell me who you are. Next, you have your introductory product. Okay, and some people, they'll skip tiers. Some people are very exact and they won't promote a higher price product until someone's bought into the continuity program. And they won't pitch the continuity program unless someone's purchased an introductory product. Obviously with the orbit, we will want to cycle people through everything at some point. But really, you might decide that no one really goes above continuity program until they've purchased some of the other stuff, right? Because it just makes sense. I'm not just going to walk off the street, see you, and then pay you 7,500 bucks. I've known you for 10 minutes, so. Right now, we're having one point, the average customer make 1.37 purchases. This is often one of the easiest places to enhance the, the net profits of a business. It's the lowest hanging fruit. Take all your happy customers and ask them, what do you want next? So we've gotten a ladder of ascension. We've taken this ladder and penciled in different projects, uh, products that we have. And now we're planning them out. So here's an example of Ascension, which is really basic. Website drives traffic to a lead magnet. They register, you deliver it. Now you promote the next thing, which is the webinar, right? Then they sign up for the webinar. This is carry over so you know where it left off. They sign up for the webinar. You run the webinar. They either buy or they don't buy. That's just a simple Ascension, right? And you can test the different places. What's really good when people are saying, what's the front end of my funnel? My personal opinion is you start with what works best, but then you also test all the entry, other entry points. So this example, we had lead magnet as the beginning, but maybe we would split test the traffic between the lead magnet and the webinar registration page. Is there a difference? You don't really know until you know. Does that make sense? And then part three, after the, the, if they bought, then you right, give them the product, and then afterwards, give them another promotion for the next thing. So that's just how the ladder of ascension works. That's why Jermaine was saying uh, earlier, frequency, it's nothing to, to, to laugh at. You know, that's a re real indicator of the relationship. Anyone here that's ever dated anyone for any period of time knows that, you know, it takes time, develops over time. It's not one and done. It's very um, shallow and, you know, there's not the depth that you want for that sustainable relationship, that longevity to it. So some of the strategies that we're going to implement is that checklist I gave you at the beginning. We want to test small and scale big fast. I want to automate everything we can. I want to be allergic to anything live. I just don't want to touch it. Even if we're doing a, la a launch, I would rather pre-record everything, set it up automated, and then run it automated from the get-go with everyone watching. 
And then the third strategy is to clone successful funnels. So it's often, that was a model that was touted to me for being successful in marketing. You throw a ton of things on the wall, you see what sticks, you clean the rest off. Seth Godin has a thing too. Every two, three years, you're supposed to get rid of the bottom 40% of the stuff you do that just doesn't work or doesn't perform as good and just create fresh. And this is just, this is an internal presentation. So other people that we needed for this. So there are two cycles of cloning the successful events. So we need to generate the leads. And this is done with email promos, social media, JVs, press releases. Paid media is really important because for a lot of people, that's the that's where all the scale comes in. JVs grow your business the fastest. I have a sales, I mean the traditional way that you're supposed to approach a JV is you build a funnel, you test it with your own traffic, your own dollars, your own cents. You get, you know, after you've done something enough times, a pattern emerges. Pattern usually remains constant unless any variables are changed. And then, um, then you approach a JV partner. And then it's really just a, tr a simple transaction. Hey, here's my product. Obviously, you can see the quality of it. You know, feel free to do what you please. And you get three, four, five people, 100,000 person email list to mail for you. you. Overnight, you have a business. So, but then if you want to scale beyond that, or once you start to fatigue those, those lists of people, you have to be able to go to paid media. You have to be able to introduce yourself to new people. So that brings us to the second half where it's all about lead conversion. And in this instance, it's a webinar registration page, uh, the reminders, the email, uh, the replay, the closing the cart, and of course the shopping cart in the center. This is something that <clears throat> I think really is kind of the secret sauce. So we talked about in the beginning of the presentation, finding the market and XYZ, and I showed you the screenshot of Facebook where I had the two point, I think it was five or 2.7 million people. Now before you jump in, is the water deep enough? Okay, you know your kind of price points, you know these sorts of things. So I need to figure that out. So I reverse engineered, and so I took us, and I wrote down all the things that are involved in the funnel. So we've got our cost per million, our impressions, ad spend, click-through rate, total clicks, cost per click, visits the page, opt-in rate, and this is really long, so it's in pieces. Registered, registered to buy, price point, unit sold, gross net profit. So I started with that. We wanted to hit $7.5 million. That was the goal that I set. <clears throat> And if we're selling a product for $9.97, then that's how many units we have to sell, $7,500. And I took the stat, this should be read as well, because these are the only real variables that we adjust, just to do different modeling and different analysis. So the only three things is the register to buy ratio, the opt-in rate, and the click-through rate. So everything else is just programmed in. And so if only 2.1% of people who register buy, then that means I need this many people to register, total. And if I need this many people to register, and my opt-in rate is only 27%, then I need that many people to visit my page. And if I'm paying, and then I went to how many clicks is that? And it's the same number of visits as clicks, although really that's not true, right? You're going to lose some people in the middle. But then what's your click-through rate? OK, well, then that's how many impressions I need. And then I went back and figured out the dollars afterwards. So if I need 33 million impressions at $10, Divided by the clicks, that's how much my ad spend is. And I just started figuring it out that way. So you really need to be able to figure out, first of all, what's my list? What's the market? OK, what's the problem I'm solving? And there's so much information. The internet has made the world so transparent. If you want to get into a market and you're thinking about it, go to Amazon.com, look at all the books and information listed there, read the reviews. What are people saying? Positive, negative, forums. There's, there's so much. Really, it's just up to, you know, it's just a matter of being creative, I guess. So anyways, is this cool? Is this helpful for anyone? Yes. So now, if we take a look and I go, OK, we've got that audience of 2.5 million people. Figure your ad will fatigue around anywhere between 7 to 14 impressions, right? Because you so show the same people your ad more than once. So I just multiply that. Is that a big enough list? If I times it by 10, no, it's not. OK, maybe I want to sell something different. Or maybe I just need to adjust my price or x, y, z. And so this is something I used to model out. And you're only seeing one line, but I did a, a bunch of different variations. And then obviously, as you get your actuals, you start plugging those in. You set your goals and then put your actuals to goals. So, and then I divided the number of impressions by 12 to figure out how many I needed per month. So, and that's really what we've been doing. So these are just KPIs, things that we're paying attention to. I mean, for me, I try to keep things as simple as possible. It's really good to get granular, especially like we've been having uh, technology issues just with the amount of traffic that we're driving. Um, but I mean, for the most part, really everything that's covered in the spreadsheet 
in my opinion. I'm, I'm, I'm so basic. It's cash in, cash out for the most part, and then what's happening in between, right? So these are the KPIs. And then off of this, so again, to talk about the earlier example of you and your business, <coughs> if you've been doing all these launches, that's great because you have all this aggregate data you can look back in hindsight and you can pick your best performing one and make your next launch the relaunch of that campaign built evergreen you know and then be able to watch that and then when you've got that steady stream of people then you're able to start diverging off of that and that's again where you get into real danger if you're going really really wide actually I had a conversation with Chris about this earlier you know saying I've got a couple of different info product ideas that um, just been sitting in the wings forever. And a friend of mine, part of why is they don't all line up. And a friend of mine, he just, you know, I was going to pick one of them up. My friend was like, what are you doing? It's not in line with everything else. And that's what we were saying. You know, if you're going to do something, you want to be inch wide, mile deep because of that. If you've got a vein, if I'm looking for water and I find a bit here, I don't go, oh, wow, I found some water. It's great. Let me go look for some water over there. And businesses do it all the time. Hey, look, I got some people to pay me money for this. That was, that's awesome. Let me go find them something over there now. Same thing, you do a promotion. Wow, we did this promotion. It worked so well, we made all sorts of money. That was great, I feel so good. What are we gonna do next? You know, just do that again. Um, so anyways, so now what we're doing is we're taking these funnels and we're trying to build upsell funnels using the Orbit system, using just simple tags and, and here, we've got a 21 day countdown timer. So this is one promotion we were doing to promote a live event. At the end, we've got a 21 day countdown timer where then if we trigger, the other campaign sequence. And I've actually changed that. So if we go here, then they already have the tag or they don't have a tag. So we wait 21 days, and if they have, then they already have, then we don't worry about that. There's actually a next one. We start a third campaign now. Or if they haven't, then we start another one. So it's just making sure everything's connected. You have your business set, you sit down, you plan out your business and your higher end purchases and start from beginning to end. Again, this is just another example. We're at the bottom, whether they have a tag or don't have a tag, what campaign we start. So now you've generating this traffic, you've got this steady flow of people, you're optimizing your conversion page, you have customers coming through the door, you need to be able to manage lead flow, you need to be able to designate. Anyone who doesn't have a sales team here is definitely leaving money on the table. I mean, just by being able to pick up the phone, we've probably had about a 20% bump to our weekend just by having sales reps handy because there's people that just need some handholding through that process but you don't want to hire sales reps and not have leads for them. That's the catch-22, right? So that's where we're just starting. We're following what works. We, we did was, um, I forget the name of the book, but it was talking about finding the bright spots. And we listed down all the different campaigns we have and all the things that we're doing and tried to figure out the ones, what are the bright spots? What are the things that are really resonating, really working for us? And we started there and started growing that. So this is just how we're setting up just for some uh, strategy sessions, note template or a tag. They get some emails once they fill out a web form, then it goes to the sales rep. And the whole point of this is just to give people just push button simplicity. Um, I actually got that from Jermaine when he was saying in his company, no one interacts with a customer without clicking a button afterwards. So and just another campaign. This is all our stuff, emails. This is part of how we do the automated webinars. You just merge the stuff in. It's pretty straightforward and simple. I don't have, I can open up the webinar campaign if you guys want to see that. It's built off of Chris's killer campaign and expanded on to sh show our shopping cart. Um, but the reason why I've started with this, and we'll jump into that and whatever you guys want, just to be group directed after. But the reason why is because, again, it really is that conversion mechanism. For us, it's a six and a half hour webinar. For some people, it's a sales letter. For some people, it's a series of three or four videos. Right? Jay said he did three webinars, pitched a mastermind. That's his thing. It's three videos, pitches the product. Other people, right? For us right now, it's literally just sign up free, get some nurture videos. Hey, here's this event. Sit there for six hours, buy our stuff. Um, so whatever that is, it's the canned and cloned sales presentation. And that's where you want to get out of having to do those constantly and face-to-face -face over and over. That's the beauty of automation and the internet. You really just need to take advantage of it and then figure out how can you help more people. So superhuman success team. These are people that we need to do it. So in summary, that's part of what we have going on and doing here. Now I can log in and show you guys the webinar funnel, but does anybody have any questions about any of this? I've run through things. Basically because I wanted to give it, I, I said I keep my presentation at 20, 30 minutes, but anybody have anything they'd like to ask? Uh, how did you target the audience on Facebook to 
because I saw you had behavior, but I wasn't sure if you had Ah, any, good, good question. Uh, interest. Yeah, no, that was so perfect, great question. So that was one of the things that we target or that I targeted when we went to do that is I was just talking about this to Chris. So when I first launched myself into hold on, how do I get out of that? I don't know how to get out of that. Anyways. That's next to me that's Yeah. Jermaine yeah. has come such a long way, man. I remember there was a time where I was the one that was in better shape between the two of us and that just no longer is the case. I don't even want to try and show off and pretend I am. Um, so this was just something that Facebook allowed, and I targeted buyers because the buyers are whose opinion really matters. The buyers are who you should be targeting. So one of the things that we did with this funnel, this webinar funnel, was we launched, we had a launch, had some success. Great, awesome. Automate it, set up an automated campaign using Jermaine's date, plug, uh, date plugins, the two of them, the on page and the custom field setting one. Set the campaign to operate around that custom field date. And then I took our buyers list and I went to Facebook and I uploaded it as a custom audience and it gave us a universe of 1.7 million people. It was a lookalike. It was a lookalike. I'm sorry, I don't know if I mentioned that. But I uploaded to Facebook and that's as, that's as, that's as complicated as it's been. We had a hot list. We had a product that fulfilled their need. We created a sales event that made money and had a positive ROI and we scaled and optimized it. We've, we've edited the video two or three times based on the stats to figure out where are we losing people for the first 10 minutes. Just try to optimize that. You can't do that if you're constantly pumping out new things every week. Good question. Did I answer your question? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, perfect. So something else, like I said, when I, I wrote a couple of books, and I got, fortunately, I got one of them to hit number one on Amazon. Um, but the reason why I did that instead of doing guest blogging and stuff is because Amazon's where all the buyers were. So I could be guest blogging on other people's blogs, but how do I know, how do I separate the tire kickers from everyone else? Whereas if I put something up for, on Amazon and someone buys from it, now I've got a quality prospect, someone who's willing to pay for that information. Which is why if we go to that ladder of ascension, why that's important. Why Jermaine's got click thresholds in his system. Why frequency mattered, whether he's going to send them an offer or not. Because if you're not engaged with me, if you're not responding to me, I mean, what kind of relationship would that be if you had someone in your office that never looked at you, talked to you, or interacted at all, and you just barked at them all day? You know, that's the future of where email's going to. Um, not to digress too much, but it really needs to be more two-way, at least with email, or interactive in some way, shape, or form, instead of just broadcasting. So, all right. Any other questions? No. Is that okay? What's the funnel without knowledge? Yeah, you want to see the funnel? Sure, I can show you the funnel. One second here. Let me just. Hold on, let me unplug this. What's the, what's the price point of product? Right, right, right. Well, for us, it really is straight that it's it's sign up for this webinar. That's a six and a half hour free event. It's in the training situation. Uh, it's a. It's a, not a telethon, but it's the formula is 20 minutes of content, 20 minutes of case study, 20 minutes of pitch. And we cycle through that six and a half times. Sorry, let me just load up the campaign. I can show you guys the campaign, but the campaign is irrelevant. It's like what, uh, how do I separate you guys? What would you guys agree on? The day is Jay, and I'm Jermaine. He's Jay and you're Jermaine. All right, so like what Jay was saying, the deal is the last thing. The deal. The deal doesn't matter. The deal's based on having everything else lined up and in place. So here, let me just open up this thing. Now, it's a bit of a big campaign. And it, unfortunately, um, Paul not here. He wouldn't be very happy. It's not very, it's not very clean. But it's, it's, the process, it's really as simple as we have an opt-in page. We have an offer. On an opt-in page, people opt in. Right now, we're working on a one-time offer on the thank you page to try to monetize the traffic faster. It's just part of the tweaking and optimization process. And then outside of that, so here we've got people opt in. So this is when we first did the original launch. We promoted it to our list. And then we have people opt in. Here we set the date. We're using the plugin. We have an HTTP post. Wait 15 minutes. Do that post again, just because the HTTP post doesn't always fire. So we just want to make sure everyone goes in the funnel. These are nurture emails. This is, these are stuff. Um, these are just, if you sign up in the events on Saturday and you sign up Sunday night, these are the content videos. We have four emails that go out that send you to four different content videos that help hype up and get you excited for the event. There's a PDF you can download, day before reminder, 
and then we just have a webinar campaign. Most of this stuff is not any different than what comes out of the box. Even if you don't have Infusionsoft, you sign up with one of these webinar services, they'll send the emails for you and they do this sort of thing. So again, it's, it's making sure that you resonate with your team, or not your team, that you resonate with your audience, that you, you've got the buyers first. Because if we did this and turned it on a different market, it might not convert at all, if that makes sense. Which is where you hear other people say, if you find a hot niche, don't tell anyone about it, because everyone else is going to come and you know, set, put their flag in your sand. So, and this is it. We just have reminder emails. And in the reminder emails, I mean, one of the most powerful things is, again, the list, your offer, and then the copy. And you need all th the three of those things. And it's that order. The list is the best. Uh, Gary Halbert used to say, if you want to improve response to your offer, mail to a different list. Because the people you're talking to might not be that interested. They might be tired. Or they might not have been um, ascended properly. So we just have the reminder emails. Everyone here knows Infusionsoft, so I'm trying to glaze over things. All this stuff is based on the shopping cart. So on the shopping cart, people would hit the shopping cart, buy, no, yes, no. If they click no, then we have a downsell path. And these are all just places where we're trying to field leads for people. If I zoom in. So here they came. They clicked to see the offer. Now, we actually had to shut this off. So that's why I didn't want, like, right now, this is what's active, this little piece. And down here, this stuff is active. And this stuff, at its core, is killer campaigns. It's out of the box webinar stuff. It's nothing that fancy. When we tried to get really fancy, and I started adding things like this stuff, which we're, gonna, we're actually working on re-implementing, and it's all cart abandonment stuff. These are all different pages people have hit. So this is, they saw the three offer page. So if they buy, the page they land on has three products offered on it. Yes, no, if they buy. It falls over them. They either did, they didn't buy any of these. If they didn't buy, then they drop down. So this is all following the fancy thing, but just keeping it really simple. That, that outline, I, those eight steps I gave you at the beginning is the model we followed. Putting those into your ascension ladder and just testing, tweaking, getting feedback from people. Jay, what's up? A uh, question from Claire. Uh, first of all, she says, uh, great presentation. Do you have an email follow-up sequence for the webinar? What kind of approach do you take? Do you downsell at some point? Yeah, perfect, perfect. So yeah, I've glazed over those details. So once people register, we drive them to keep them excited, then they show up and attend. Then we have wait three days, and then here we've got three groups of people. We have saw offer, so people who stayed long enough to see our pitch on the webinar and then left. We have people that came and left before we got to reveal our pitch, and there were people who didn't come at all. And most every so uh, webinar software out there now um, is able to give you these, this data on people. This many registered, this many showed, this many stayed for this long. So we have custom feedback for all those people. For the people who didn't show, we're telling them, hey, go back and watch this great replay. For people who came and saw, we're trying to pinpoint certain timestamps in the video. Hey, you really missed when so-and-so talked about this, so-and-so talked about that, go back and see it. And for people that saw, we just really want to drive home the value and the testimonials of people and the results they've been getting. And then after that, we've got these closing the carts. And this is actually going to be updated, um, just these two, because, because it's a six and a half hour event, you know, it's kind of hard to separate who saw the CTA versus who didn't see the CTA. So we essentially have the main closing the cart sequence, but now what we have, we actually have two other webinar funnels that are producing income in the, kind of in the wings that aren't really under our focused attention. Um, they're just cranking out money. But what we'll do for the no-show is that if they haven't shown up for the live event, if they haven't watched the replay, there's no point in trying to close the cart on them and tell them that you know, it's coming off in 48 hours. I'll open this up if you want to see. I mean, it's wait 15 minutes, then we send them this 72-hour down, like closing the cart, tell them that this won't be available to you in 72 hours. We don't want to lie. We want to main, remain with integrity. But we're saying, hey, we just had a bunch of people buy. We want to make sure we take care of those people. If you want to be part of that group, you really need to act now. 72 hours left, 48 hours left, 24 hours left, eight hours left, one hour left, we're done. So we just follow up after people. The fortune is definitely in the follow up. So now what we want to do for the no-show people, because we want to try to, again, we're optimizing this as we go. We've been tweaking these emails three or four times. We've gone in and been like, you know, we should really put a testimonial there. We should really try to do this. Unfortunately, Infusionsoft doesn't let you split test emails very easily. So we're just trying to track our numbers and our performance. and. What are we getting? We get on average 1.8 to 2.8% of people who register to buy. Um, and we get about 20 to 30% of those sales in the follow-up that comes post-event. 
So, and that's the campaign. So we've got this, we've got another one um, that, yeah, this, this campaign alone, we've done somewhere around 1.3 to $1.5 million with on its own. From that, we're generating leads for different products and services. We know we have another live event that's happening later this year. We've got over 27,000 people who have come through this. So that's the other thing. I have a friend that's having an issue where the cost of buying traffic is starting to be where they just break even on the front end, and that's almost why you need to be able to build out that deeper, deeper, deeper back end. So. I got a quick question on the lookalike, and I know I think you said it already, but the lookalike is based on customers that have gone through, or like what are you doing the lookalike based on? Correct. So yeah, for this, I wanted ad traffic, or I wanted traffic to promote this event to. So we uploaded all the buyers that we had, their email addresses to Facebook, and I said, give me the most similar lookalike audience you've got. And buyers I through the webinar or buyers totally? Buyers through the webinar. Okay. Try to keep it product specific. He, he asked buyers through the webinar or buyers from the company as a whole. I would probably do a lookalike for every product for those ad campaigns because the profile might be different. And I don't really know what Facebook is doing with their algorithm. But again, they just have made it so simple. You can go on Amazon. You can find things people are selling that are selling well, that aren't selling well. Look at the reviews, what people like, what people don't like. Find the gap. Find the list of people. And you just run your test. It's that simple. It's that, it's that formula at the beginning. Let me go. It's really find a hot buyer's list. You have a product to sell. Opt in page sales letter. You know, expand that. Ads to lead magnet sales letter autoresponder. You run your test. If you, either it's going to bomb, it's going to be wildly successful, or it's going to be marginal. If it's marginal, if it's as long as profitable, or you're okay with what you, you know, if you don't believe in loss leaders, and it's something you're okay with, then you just start tweaking and optimizing it. I mean, it's a Dan Kennedy thing that if it's making you money, you just keep it going. You just don't, you don't kill anything that's making you money. You just try to tweak and optimize it and repurpose it and feed it into back-end things. And that's really it, and that's where a lot of people, and even myself, uh, previously, you know, working in a brick and mortar business in a small town, realizing that the goals I had weren't in line with the business what, what I was in because I was, the pond was way too small. So that's where getting clear about this and following these steps first and foremost, and then doing a bit of math on the back end can really save you a lot of heartache and struggle. And then it just becomes like for us right now, the biggest struggle is just maintaining the integrity of the technology. You know, we've had weekends where Stealth was, had a DNS attack. I don't even know what that means. All I know is that we were projecting, because week after week, you know, we're producing, creating about 50,000 50, every Saturday just by getting enough people on there. And we're really trying to ramp that up now and expand into other traffic sources. Um, I lost my train of thought. But the numbers are so predictable. I mean, you guys, you said, um, like, in the morning, he'll text me and he'll say, we got X subscribers. So we'll make this. And then I'll text them at the end of the night. I say, so how, how are your numbers looking? And down to like give or take, what, 0.2%. Yep, yep. The numbers just keep coming in every Saturday. And yep. it's like, yeah, we made 50 grand a day. Yeah, we made 80 grand a day. But you've got that yeah. with your campaigns. You have campaigns that you know on oh, average. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. and that's but the power of that Canon clone sales presentation. Right. But your price point, like I always say, like I kick myself over like setting up a big campaign for my $37 gospel thing. But now, <laughs> see, I get the same amount of sales, but you know, your 50 sales is $50,000. So yep. you know, my next thing is, you'll be seeing these for Automation Clinic for sure. <laughs> you guys have already bought, but for you know, everybody else out there, yep. I'm definitely yep. going to imitate it. Yeah, and that just comes from having an audience that we can cater to. And again, it's only 1.8 to 2.8% of people that buy. But part of that is the six and a half hour event as well. That's something most people, like a 75 minute webinar is like, whoa. So. so I'm not 100% clear on exactly how you're doing this. Are the Saturday webinars live and then, and then you do replays or you did it live one time and it looks like it's live to everybody coming through but it's recorded? Yeah, that's perfect. So basically we're, yeah, we're, we did it live one time. We have videos and all the things we did. We did a launch. We have all the materials that we took from that. We have data on what worked, what didn't work. We replaced what the things that didn't work, we just automated it, which were two plugins from Jermaine, and then we just ran it again. We had JV's remail, we started driving Facebook traffic, Facebook traffic with mixed results at the beginning, you know, and then I got the idea, hey, how do we know we're targeting people right? How do we know we don't have the wrong list? Which is why when I showed that screenshot, I, was, I, I clearly went and I looked up um, the buyers. That was, I was like, 
I was dancing, I was cackling alone in my apartment like an evil madman when I saw that Facebook would now let you target buyers of certain things. I was just like, because that's just, I don't need my SRD a subscription anymore. So that is in addition to the customer list. So does it literally take the customer list, makes a lookalike, the lookalike is like 10 million people, and then it takes out of the 10 million those who have bought marketing no. products or it's or. Is it yeah. and or or? So, so yeah, so this is just something I took a screenshot to show you guys to demonstrate because I wanted to make this applicable and have you guys visibly be able to see where, where can I go find enough people to build a multi-million dollar funnel. And so this is just something I pulled today and I just picked purchase behavior because that's, I mean, that's just great criteria I start with. For us, it was lookalike. And then what we've done is to try and keep it fresh is we've taken that massive lookalike audience and tried to battle fatigue. We've tried to block it into segments of different, different things, male, female, interest, categories, and just freshen the ads. But essentially, I mean, it all comes down to traffic times conversion. Blank units times blank price equals target income. When I did my math, it was $7.5 million. And the reason why is I have, I have a friend, she writes for Forbes magazine, and she did this thing. She had 101 days of 101 unreasonable requests. That's how she got to write for Forbes. She's got like this, she got it free. It's like a walking desk. Like it's got like a, it's a treadmill desk. She's all these things. She just made 101 ridiculous requests. And I remember sitting down and I was like, what's the most ridiculous number I think we can make today? I was like, yeah, it's $7.5 million. And so plot out in a spreadsheet, do some reverse engineering and math, and have a, a sales funnel that you've tested and is it's predictable. I mean, if you have a sales page or an opt-in page that converts at you know 40%, and it converts at 40% for the most part, as long as the traffic remains integri is integral, or, I mean, has, integrity. has integrity, thank you. As long as your traffic has the same integrity, you should expect the same result. And that's where you just reverse engineer everything. And then you hit to a point where now Okay, we've got the money to fund it and that. Let's hire an agency. Let's make it, you know, make it attractive for them to be involved and let them worry about driving the traffic and everything and just establish our parameters. But to do all those things, you have to, you have to start with the buyers first. You have to find the market first. Then you have to make sure that you've got the universe that you need to scale. You have to do the math. How big can you grow? Can you handle it? Again, for us, it wasn't the math. It wasn't putting the things together. It's actually been able to grow and then you know, plug up the plumbing where things start to break as you grow and scale. So, any other questions? Okay, I got a lot of blank faces. Was this good for everyone? Yeah. Good. I think everyone's deep in thought, so that's excellent. Where's the book? Uh, it's, yeah, I don't have it here. I have nothing to sell you guys. I feel bad. <laughs> Jay was up there. I'm like, man, look at that guy go. I'm just, I have the same thing as you. I'm like, man, he's like on. He's just so passionate, enthusiastic. I got. He doesn't have a book from me. I gave him 40 um, bucks. I have a couple of them. So. <laughs> Empty handed. Sure. Yeah. Was it sure, my sure, original sure. intent? Uh, is this? This might be it. There we go. So these are the three books that I wrote. Um, this is the one that hit number one Ancient Secrets of Lead Generation. Business Success Secrets. They're thin books. One of my, I wrote them in, with uh, busy people, business people in mind, my market in mind. The reason why I did three books as well instead of one is I felt each hit a different pain point. So one was like the day-to-day -day management. One's kind of like, what am I doing? And this one I figured was like, how do I get leads and grow my business? So I put all three up because I wanted to see which one was the, would the market respond to best. I love that ancient secret. Yeah, I'm sure you do, eh, Jermaine? Yeah, so uh, the title, uh, I have to give props to Jermaine. So we sat up late one night over Facebook and uh, helped me with that. So much appreciated. And it just took off. Uh, all, this, all the right things are in place. Eyes looking at you, color red. That's another thing. If anyone's marketing on Facebook, one of the best things to do is look at your industry and see what color, like what's the color palette. I'm a dude, so it's, I'm like, what? red, pink, what? So, but you just look at the color scheme and you just make something that really contrasts that to get more attention. So anyways, any questions? Anything anyone wants to know? Feel free to pick my brain. Yeah. So what's the product that you're using? Right now? What's the product that you're using to manage these webinar replays and make it look like it's alive? Sure. Um, there's tons of them out there. The one we're using is Stealth Seminar, which has been great. Um, they weren't my favorite. We started off with EBS, Evergreen Business Systems. Uh, I've heard lots of mixed results. If you have a programming background, a lot of these one and done ones are okay, because if there's any bugs or, or things missing, you can kind of figure it out and dive into the code and do your thing. 
for me, I'm not, and we really needed the service, so we went with Stealth because when we're trying to scale, we just things break. We want, you know, you have a weekend, you're expecting fifty thousand dollars in revenue. You want someone sitting there watching to make sure everything runs smoothly, right? So um, that's one. I am also a big fan of Easy Webinar and Auto Webinar Press. So and also Citrix GoToMeeting is not necessarily automated, automation friendly. They just launched a new division called GoToWebcast. So we're, we just set up a backup link with them. I'm kind of mixed feelings. The reports are great. You have to set it every week. It won't just run every week. I don't know why it's not a button, but it's Citrix. You know, he works. <clears throat> he works for Citrix. Who? The guy who asked the question. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> not not in the webinar division. That's all good. So I mean, really, that's it. And this is old again, old direct mail. Um, I, I can summarize this book for you in, in a few steps. I mean, the way advertising developed was, you know, back in the day, we were all just people on a horse and buggy going from town to town selling our wares. And we realized we can only knock on so many doors in a day. And every time we knock on a door, we go through the same pitch. Maybe if I write this down on paper and I give it to a little boy, he can run ahead. And then when I show up, you know, at least they're kind of familiar with it and I can get through more doors that way. And then you get, you know, this revision that just works so well. Man, I don't even need to go to the door. I can just put the order information there and let the boys run back to my cart and I'll just give them the product, collect the money. And, and oh, I don't even need to do it. I can just put letters in the mail. And that's just how it's grown and evolved. And now we have all this technology, and it all just models the offline world in an online way. So same thing, that's what a webinar is. If you, have, if you have a company and you've got an amazing sales rep, record them. Can that, clone that. That's, uh, again, I'm, I'm, none of this is me. If I've, it's all people I've studied under that come up with this stuff. But just a lot of, a lot of the best sales letters are taking sales reps and recording their, their sales pitch, having it transcribed, laying it out, breaking it into pieces and just trying to make get rid of the fluff and keep the best stuff and organize it and format it and give it to people. And then now you've got that on, you know, as a video. Now you've got like see how it works? That's why again I wasn't so much about the campaign, because I don't wanna I don't wanna be here's a fish and if you put these blocks in this arrangement, <clears throat> you're gonna make a million dollars. I wanted to come here and give you guys real substance. You have to do the research, there's the checklist. There's a twenty five point checklist to optimize your sales page. It's in the Facebook group. You have to do some math, basic arithmetic, you know, and then you just have to do take care of people, and you have to be able to sell, and you have to be able to deliver quality products. So, is there a, uh, a URL where we could like check out the webinar? Yes, it would be yourbrainathon.com. And Jermaine Massey is one of the interviewees, right? Yeah, Jermaine's actually uh, one of the case studies. I know. I get emails every Saturday and Sunday from the people who buy the product. <laughs> they track me down. It's awesome. Really, eh? It is. Yes, yeah. they do. <laughs> so this is just the basic page, and we're actually going to update this. This has been our winning version. This is like the best of 21 variations. This is just Optimized Press 2.0. I'm just going to go test, test, test that, test. I know some people really think it looks like that. He zoomed out. Yeah, yeah, I zoomed out. It's more, it's more in. Your brain a thon. Why and this, you pick Saturday? Because it's a six and a half hour event. And that's when we did the original launch. So, and this is just modeling something the company's done, you know, and it works every year and it's been bigger every year. And this year we did 91% better than they did last year, just on tweaking and improving opt in pages. Just by, like, just by looking at the data and trying to optimize as we go, and by having that follow up sequence laid out in advance. It wasn't perfect, but it was done. Have you tested asking people to share this page on social media? Yeah, um, we were doing that when we, when we were using EBS. Um, it's something that we want to upsell. Right now, we want to, instead of trying to get people to share, we want to make a one-time offer on this page to try to monetize the traffic faster. Um, and that way we can scale and afford to pay more to get that first sale. Again, that comes back to my presentation. It's not about the first sale. It's about the lifetime relationship. And, Oh no, it's okay. If all you have is one thing to offer someone, you need to do more research into your prospect and find out what else can I deliver them. And one thing that is really like coming more and more and more aware to me is that you know the the, the inch wide, mile deep. <laughs> I only want to deal with one-legged blonde women from Alabama that sing, say the ABCs backwards. Like man, you find a group of those people, make them an offer, personalize that message for them. The conversion rate's going to be eighty percent. 
You know, it's just, it's really just about finding that. You can go too deep. So it might be hard to go too deep depending on the space you're in, but it's way too easy to go way too wide. So. That's just gonna have your next book title. What? The one legged swan woman. <laughs> 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 I think you say inch wide, mile deep, and you're like, the one legged blonde woman from out. Yeah, so. How to find the. Yes. One -legged blonde -woman. And now with technology, it's so easy. Again, like I was saying, you just. Facebook, you go to Amazon, use Quantcast, use just all, it's ridiculous, the tools you have. Alexa. Have, so. you, tested, have you tested, I mean, the, the, obviously the formula works, and like you said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, if, have you tested charging a nominal amount for the webinar? Uh, since it's six and a half hours, obviously, obviously there's some value in it. There's a lot of content. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're if you're talking, you know, 20 minutes of content, 20 minutes of case study, and 20 minutes of um, pitch, you know, over six hours, there's a lot of content in there. Yeah. Um, have you tested like with Chris's model? You know, we have another, 10 or 15 bucks or something. We have another webinar. So this one on the side has gotten nominal traffic. I actually don't even know the stats on it, but it pulled in eighty thousand dollars for us in the first quarter, and um, that one we were charging seven dollars for. Um, we haven't done that for this one yet. Did did you? For that one that you were charging seven dollars for, did you test it with and without the seven, or did you just throw the seven at it and see what happened? We didn't get the chance to uh, split test between the two, mm -hmm. just because there's so many things that we have going on. It's yeah. just a fast growing company, but it, the, that webinar, the reason why we kind of stopped focus on that is it wasn't converting at something that was satisfactory for us. Mm -hmm. So and we had new things on the calendar already, new launches mm -hmm. coming. So those are all things that you know the plan is. That's how we're going to reach our goal is to go back, optimize those, and split test those and. Um, that's definitely on the slate. It, does that one sell to a different product, or it sells a similar, very similar product? Okay, same similar so, price point and everything. Yeah, it's a very similar. Yeah, very similar okay. product. The one that you get through this funnel, though, I believe personally that it's better. It's more enhanced, and mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Okay. So cool. Yeah. Any other questions? So Laura, does this get you even more pumped up to? Uh, yeah, I just your, like yeah. Uh, Pretty much just completely reworking my business model now. Um, We're not going to sleep the next week. Uh, yeah, I, I, I we just. Will be an icon. Uh, sorry. Yeah, I, I, I'm really not seeing a whole lot of value in going to the the other three or four days of stuff because I got work to do. Um, but I, I I did make a promise to my team that I would not send them every idea that I have in an email, a separate email. Like I would wait until I was done with Icon and then spend time on the plane distilling everything and come up with the final plan. Save that email, uh, you know, once in a while. Yeah, because otherwise it would get ugly. But yeah, I mean, this this is exactly where we need to go. Yeah, yeah. and again, it fits so well with what Jermaine teaches. I mean, yeah. that's why you have the orbit, right? That's yeah. why you want to have the ascension. That's why the follow up for the nurture pyramid, there's the click thresholds. Because if someone hasn't even clicked your emails five times, they don't, you don't want to pitch them through anything. They're going to complain about spam. They're going to hurt your deliverability. It's just, why bother with that? So again, it's really about just, I mean, one of the best things Jermaine told me, when I think it was the first or second time I saw him at InfusionCon, was just follow 10 people. Just put them in your app and just follow where they go and just build out the Olympic road in front of them. You know, and I was like, yeah, it's really amazing to just put a group of people through and just have all sorts of data collection points. And so, anyways, that's just how things have been growing and evolving. And No, I just wanted to underscore the point one more time for Laura. Um, when, even when I, I remember when I went down to their studio and did the thing, I knew nothing about automation, <laughs> what they were doing. I didn't even know what Jermaine did. I just know uh, when, he, when I was there, he was texting. Uh, me he's like wow you're there and I was like yeah how did you know these guys it was it was a very interesting thing but when it came down to me figuring out what I needed to do I said what did they do oh oh I get it they just recorded a live webinar all right let me do that and that was I just did that now we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna go do this yeah. <laughs> which is great so <laughs> you know I keep it simple yeah I was gonna say, one of the things that came out of this for me is just uh, the live stuff's great but I'm just as good on a recording as I am live, so, and it, it, re it takes a lot of the pressure out to have to show up at exactly the right time and be spot on at that day and, yep. you know, have everything perfect and nobody's mowing the lawn outside or jackhammering the, the pavement or whatever. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to record them all and make sure that they're awesome yeah. um, ahead of time, and then we're just going to run everything through um, I think it's a great idea. 
Yeah, I mean, that, that just changes the, the world right there. And something that is smart that I did before I came to work here uh, in, well, in San Diego, was I actually figured I'd put in the harder, the, the extra legwork, which is why I worked so, hustled so hard to get my book to hit number one, because then I could get on radio, television, and newspapers. And I just jumped and I did the group coaching program, and I built a group of six people because the stuff and the work I did with them, I wanted to filter down to create everything else. So instead of just starting at the bottom and like, man, how, it's 18 months before I make enough money you know, to be profitable, because I got to sell 37 e-books or you know, 300 e-books at $37 a month just to pay, you know what I mean? Work your way up. I just went for the jugular. But of course, you have to have quality content, right? You, you're not going to go very far if you can't deliver on the value and your promises. But just, just food for thought. If you've already got a presence in a list, it might be smart to go big and then work backwards and then help people build that ladder to you. I don't know if that helps. I, I just thought well, I saw you, Jay. That's why I said that, because I know you're building it out. And you've got that mastermind group in there. Well, so. That's what I did, but I didn't have the list. Um, I just did it. And so I just told people that, hey, I'm going to do this group coaching thing and they showed up and I said cool and here it is and we were making it up as we went we just recorded it as we went which is so smart what was the one thing that I that was probably yeah and we didn't know we didn't do we didn't have that forethought mm -hmm. you know we just did and yeah. we still just do yeah. <laughs> that's what we do so I'm, I'm loving I'm like oh I got one right when you said that I was like oh I didn't know that that was the smart thing to do I was like sweet <laughs> let's just go for it so I, I'm feeling Ex even more excited now. Yeah. No, everyone, there's no, there's no bean counter in the sky that's going to determine how much you can or can't make. Really, that's determined by the people you serve. Um, and so that's, again, to go back to Jay and what he had said before, like the deal is the most interchangeable thing. Um, you can just put an ad in the paper saying, marketer looking for products to sell. I mean, that's, yeah. I'm, it's, it's why you hear, now I'm getting into my own personal philosophy on things, but that's why you hear like these overnight successes off YouTube and stuff. It's because they've built a following, so it's really easy for them to get a deal. Someone who's made a book and like hustled and sold it themselves and has got a following, it's really easy for them to get a deal because they're not just one more person in this long line of people saying, hey, can you just sell my stuff? I have this great thing. Like the business graveyard is littered with great products and services that just didn't get any traction because they didn't get to anybody. And that's why you want to make sure you've got a pawn that you can access, that you've got a funnel that works and converts, and that you've got something that is steady and consistent. Otherwise, you're just really, you're just, it's not a scientific. So it's more of a tactical. Yeah. <laughs> Jay's, get, Jay's getting his exercise today. <laughs> it's more of a technical question, but sure. if your webinar is on Saturday and they sign up on a Thursday, do you push them to that Saturday? Yeah. What if they sign up on a Saturday? Yeah, so that's, we actually have had, and that's where we're talking about certain technical things. So we have a bit of a ghost window, depending on time zone they're in, wh which Saturday they, the software signs them up for versus they actually get the, the they actually thought they Start. signed up to attend. Right. right now, we're down to like maybe, I think, like a four hour questionable window. So in the grand scheme of things, it's not that big of a deal. We were just shutting the ads off. Now it's just kind of cost the business, and we're looking to improve that. And that's one of the things is we want to, start allowing more flexibility in webinar times and see what that does to our conversion rate. So if somebody signs up on a Sunday, you're driving them for the Saturday. That Saturday coming, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, um, so what, what plugins are you using to, I mean, you're using Jermaine's date script, but is it, are you working backwards from that? So are you setting the launch or the, the webinar date on the record and then using date fields for like five days before, Got two it. days before. Yes, that's exactly what we're doing. So gotcha. here in the campaign, up here in the beginning, way up here in the beginning, we've got, they get the you're in email, but then here we set an HTTP post. Wait 15 minutes or 30 minutes and do it again. Just because we want to make sure it fired. One thing that I've learned with Infusionsoft is as much as I love Infusionsoft, it is not flawless. Um, Plus even your server. Too. Yeah, 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 exactly. So there's tons of places where things can disconnect. So it's just a backup. And this is just the way we've, again, just trial and error, right? Optimize. But that's, so we set the HTTP post and all the rest of the emails in the campaign are based around that event date. And that's using one of Jermaine's plugins. Gotcha. Okay. And, um, with Stealth, one of the things that <clears throat> I started doing is they have this option to where you can have a webinar start at the top of the hour relative to the time the person seeing the 
yes. landing page. Yep. Um, and that seemed to help, and I was just wondering if you guys did any data on having that option versus not having that option. Not yet. Only because, <clears throat> only because the company has too many cylinders firing that this hasn't, we've hired some like five, six people in the last five, six weeks just to be able to give this the focus, time, and attention that we want and needed to have. So, because we have a, an ongoing calendar of events that we have to keep up with, we have sales reps we have to field leads for. So it hasn't been, this hasn't been like isolated in a vacuum, right? We're all like calm and peaceful here, but we all know once we get back home, the phone's gonna start ringing, the email's gonna blow up, and all the stuff that we're not doing now, it's gonna avalanche in and slam and hit us in the face. So we're doing the best we can with what we can. We are somewhat limited because of the six and a half hour video length. Um, if it was an hour, we'd be testing a lot more, but because of that, we're really stuck on Saturday, Sundays. Um, so that, again, that's something that we want to do because we're really starting to get to now, we're starting to capture a larger international audience as well. So that's where we want to because we've got people, we've large portion of our sales come from Australia and you know, for them, it's like four in the morning. Those people are waking up, right? But then you have, you have issues with that because now you start making it too easy for people to attend. Sometimes you need hurdles because that will, that's like a, the micro commitment that starts the motion that gets them to actually, right, to buy, so. Well, and, and I guess that's where I was kind of going with that, of, and not to belabor the point, but when, because mm -hmm. I did this strategy on eBay, where if I wanted to sell any item, say if I wanted to sell it for twenty four ninety nine, what I would do is that I would create uh, in two auctions, one at the top that would end just before it, one just below it. So if you were looking for that item, you saw three auctions, three different prices. It's all me, uh, but I'm totally, I've got the 99 cent one that everybody's bidding on, and I know it's going to sell for more than twenty four ninety nine. And I also know you're going to bid on the last day. So I'm going to make sure that it's going to end at the same time. And you're going to see all this bidding activity, and it's going to be higher than $24.99. The $24.99 is going to be that perfect price point. Buy it now. Don't worry about it. And as that bid gets high enough, you're just going to like, you know what, I'll just buy it now. Worked all the time. And that's what I've been noticing with those people who, when I give the now option, they, most of them don't choose the now option. They choose the very next one, and they show up for it. Mm, 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 and mm, I just didn't know if you had anything that could back that up to compare too, that. Yeah. because I, it's like, yeah, I could go right now, but no, I'll get, I'll get the next because I give them three options. It's immediately, and then it's six p.m. the next day, and six p.m. the day after that. Right, right, right. And they most often choose the six p.m. the day after that, mm. and then they show up. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah, keep those stats, keep building to those stats. That's where things like day score and hour score really come in, because you'll find, I actually was at a, I was at a breakfast, of, like a mastermind breakfast group, and an ICC there, he was talking about how they figured out it was like between two, I think it was like two and 6 p.m. is where all their buyer traffic comes off analytics. So they just shut off everything outside that time zone, and they really like talk about it's really honing in your ROI. Part of why we haven't optimized as best as we could as well is because coming back to this ladder, we're building funnels for all of this. We have an orbit to get built. So we're trying to crank out all these launches, all these funnels, test and tweak them and optimize them, run the business, plug it in, and scale that main funnel. Because my goal, what I did when I did this spreadsheet for the 7.5 million, I took all of our automated funnels and I plugged them all into the spreadsheet. Where is my spreadsheet? I plugged them all into my spreadsheet to go, how do I make each of these hit that, that, that goal, that mark? So, because I don't like I don't like failing, um, I don't think anyone really enjoys it. Um, but I like to, you know, hedge my bets. So I figure if we have four or five different funnels scheduled out for this, then, you know, it increases our chances of hitting our targets. And then part of what the division has been is just keeping up with the technology. And we had issues with Infusionsoft that people weren't moving forward, glitches, links reappearing, disappearing all sorts of pandemonium. So we've really had to develop a close partnership with them, um, which has just been awesome. Um, same thing with Stealth, and that's part of why, you know, Stealth was honestly one of my last choices, just because I didn't like the, the look and feel of it. But functionally, we really needed it, and they've really pulled through. Jeff is an amazing guy. Um, so if someone was just starting out and really nervous, I would really recommend Stealth. It's more expensive, but if you need that hand-holding, definitely hands down. And then outside that, you know, it's, it's kind of like, I don't know, the devil you know versus the devil you don't know. EBS, I love the look and feel. Um, it's full of bugs. There's non-existent service. 
And then the other ones is just kind of a mix in between those two, if that makes sense. So. Do we have stats on actually how many people actually complete the webinar? Uh, we do. Uh, that's another technical glitch. So we have a six and a half hour video. We know who, how many people showed up and how many people see our CTA. We don't really know how many people hang on the whole length because it's a six and a half hour video and in stealth the reporting dash goes this wide. And so we only get about three hours of stats and then we just know what sales we make after that. Is there a question? Yep, uh, online Tom is asking, if, can you comment on how many of the Automation Clinic plugins you use routinely compared to those available? Which plugins uh, and AC and Automation Clinic concepts would you recommend relative to newcomers to automation to implement first? Got it, that's a great question. So um, right now, and so first of all, if I were starting fresh, it would be it would be automated funnels, and it would be getting your four video sequence up and running to make that first sale. I think is what I would want it. You want to start being, you want to start generating a buyer's list. You want to start building a list, and then also building a, a buyer's list, so some sort of low-end offer. Um, that's where I would start because you need a place to grow with, right? You need that that vein of water in the earth or that first drop of oil to keep digging towards. So that's what I would say there. As far as plugins. Um, you know, a lot of these are so automated. I, I actually had to think about it because I was only going to say, well, the on-page plugin and the date setting plugin, but we actually use a lot more than that. Um, every time a purchase is made, I'm pinging all the recency frequency ones that we want to update when they purchase, the total spent, the days between purchase. So all the RFM, I, I don't know if Jermaine's going to get to go dive into that at all, but RFM is phenomenal. It's one of the most valuable things you can look at in your business is, there, is just look at your customer base and organize them based on recency, frequency, and monetary value. Because that's now, now that we're having so many buyers, when I go to update our custom audience in Facebook, I'm not just going to upload all the email addresses of all our buyers. I'm going to take that buyers list and I'm going to go, hey, you know, what's the segment that's bought the most of our products, that spent the most money with us, and is the most recent? You know, let's upload those people. So RFM is, is really like, if you're within an existing business that's, you know, has cash flow running through and customers and operations happening, just an RFM analysis could just, it could just blow the lid off of whatever you're doing just because you'll, you'll start looking at where the real money is. That whole 80-20 book, you know, it's, it's that Pareto principle. It's all in the, I'm just regurgitating Jermaine right at this point. Like it's all, it's all there and he breaks down how to do it and it just will show you who to focus on versus, you know, let nurture and grow and develop in your database a bit more. So. Any other questions? Speak now, forever hold your peace. Chat's good, everyone else is good. Yeah. Are you taking on other clients or just <coughs> sticking with John? Ah, am I taking on other clients or just sticking with John? That's an excellent question. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, go back to the room, whatever. I, I'm open to discussions. I am very loyal and committed, so I would not want to infringe upon any of my obligations, responsibilities, but I'm open to helping people. So I just don't want to misrepresent expectations. But obviously everyone here is that same caliber level of experience and kind of what we're trying to do and use the same tools. So if there's any way I can help you, please just come let me know. Um, sorry if that's kind of sidestepping the question. So. I mean, I, I guess this is an intimate group. I have, I came on board with John already with clients that I've kind of grandfathered in and be able, been able to maintain. I have a couple of other clients, but I'm working full time for John, and I very much have really clear drawn lines between when I'm working for him and not working for him. So that answers that question. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you, everybody. All right. Appreciate your time.